Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, I see the Duke of Tears. We're out here post uh, Hurricane Irma. Peace to everybody that um, sent a lot of well wishes and prayers, as well as a cot and donations. That was really helpful. It really uh, allowed us to maintain ourselves during the so-called storm. Um, we're at the beach. The beach where I'm at now, based upon the storm, maybe receded about 30 feet in, which is crazy. Um, uh, also, condolences and prayers to anybody that didn't make it or who was uh, adversely put out by the situation. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, as usual, we wanted to talk about. Let me move a little closer, let everybody pass. Um, one of the main things that's going on right now that's scaring everybody is um, your man um, Trump with this whole nuclear war thing with North Korea. But really, that's just a soft grab because a lot of things is happening with him. A lot of people don't know, but he's been um, he's been under what's called a sealed indictment from the time of I think last month, right before the hurricane. So his sealed indictment is going through, and um, they're trying to find ways to basically go forth with the impeachment. That impeachment uh, that they want to put on him is part of the reason why he's going so hard with the North Korea thing, almost like. What's happening with these alternative so-called white supremacist fascist people is that they're basically at a stage where they know that the jig is up for them. Um, on international platforms, whether you know it or not, you might not know because a lot of us don't have access to um, individual uh, trading platforms from the various uh, financial institutions in the world. But one of the things that's happening is that the United States is being forced to divest out of international partnerships that were based on things like NAFTA, GATT, and these type of free trade agreements. And what that is doing is it's marginalizing the United States to a position where it can't basically uh, support its own deficit. So whenever you hear them, um, they have what they call, I think it's a www.us debt clock. You can, you can type in on that and it shows you how much the debt goes up every second. And now what's happening is that you have a lot of countries countries divesting out of United States goods and services. So what this is doing is it's causing what they say a freeze on the market, where now people are trying to look for other lucrative ways to diversify their funds. But the problem in that is that all funds in the United States is based on mortgage-backed securities. What is a mortgage-backed security? Mortgage-backed security is anything that is mortgaged. So that means houses, that means um, property, it means people, first of all. So in that, all of these so-called mortgage-based securities, which are also mortgage, which are um, propped up by mortgage-backed securities, are now in a position where a lot of the privatization of business is forcing the United States now to basically sell everything in what they call a mass fire sale. So behind that, you have a lot of people now that are going through things like they call, uh, what is it called? It's called debt forgiveness, where you see a lot of things like that. A couple of years ago, it was all about credit report, right? It was all about getting your credit reports. Then it was all about your credit repair. Now it's all about debt, con then it went to debt consolidation. Now they're going to debt forgiveness. Debt forgiveness is predicated on how many people actually have access to their so-called master accounts, which would then put them in a position to be able to uh, act as their own custodians for their for their own um, estates and trusts. But you got to remember, 90% of uh, all trusts and estates in the United States are considered abandoned. So when you see people trying to access their direct TDA accounts, like I talked about, like there's an element where you might be able to do that and rock for a couple of things, but they're not going to let you rock ultimately with it because it is in a position where you are using something that is tied up in a bunch of different trusts. So anytime you have a trust, right, that's established, that essentially is established privately, when you're dealing with these people, you're dealing with a compounded trust. You're dealing with trust with extreme penalties for interest and breaking into that. This is what creates what they call antitrust law. 
right? So what's happening in the United States now is people within the United States are starting to realize that everything that they're doing is really not not literally, but is only based in business. Meaning that school is a business, church is a business. Everything that you were trying to separate in terms of what was business and what was like private or personal is now non-existent. Everything in the United States from the beginning was based upon how they could predicate business. And the business of the United States started with mass kidnapping. Okay, so human trafficking was the first major business in the United States and has been making money for them ever since. That's what the prison system is based on. That's what the educational system is based on. It's based on the psychological and emotional kidnapping of human beings and the way to facilitate and turn them into corporate dead pledges, dead mortgages, dead meaning that nothing is backed by anything living. So what happens in a situation or a society like that is that when the people start to wake up to what is actually powering the society, the society then falls on the verge of collapse. So whenever you get a society on the verge of collapse, you got to understand most societies only last about maybe about 200 some odd years, especially if we're dealing with the modern Western philosophy of what societies are based on and how they are. They're basically things that are creations of law or what what we say like a creature of law. So these creatures of law don't exist in the real world. They only exist where creatures can exist in the mind, in the imagination. Um, So when we talk about maps and states and stuff like that, we're talking about things with imaginary boundary lines. We're not talking about things that are actively real in the world. We're talking about things that have been presumed to be something based upon everybody agreeing on it. So what that says is that modern society or Western society as we understand it is really predicated and based on the lie. The lie that they did everything that they could to build this thing up for the equality of men, for the for the for the advancement of children and women. Nothing like that was ever the basis of the United States. So now that we are being forced to deal with America, right, which is the country, which is the actual landmass, the continental United States of America and Congress assembled, what we, as Moors, refer to as the Maghreb al-Aqsa, what uh, some of the ancients referred to as the Atlantean, Lemuria, Mu, Pangaea, whatever you want to call it, this landmass that we own right now is basically going into a total receivership meaning that all of the occupational governments that exist here, meaning the United States government out of Washington, D.C., and 10 square square miles outside of its main branch, and all of the alphabet agencies that were created from that, which the United States holds trust in, but are not not actively a part of the United States. So when we talk about FBI, CIA, DOJ, Homeland Security, uh, all these different things, all of those are agencies that the United States government actually has stock in, but they're not actively part of the United States government. Therefore, they're rogue agencies. And now that the Moto Proprio then came out a couple of years ago, they don't last at that. Then everybody's up in arms about this guy, Ernest Rothschild, and nobody's ever seen right nobody's ever seen him per se and nobody knows that if this is the real Ernest Rothschild or whatever because this person's name is Ralph Child and he's talking about the freedom or the freeing up of the royal assets a royal asset or what they consider a royal asset is the actual people who were the nobility and the royalty of whom are states that they assumed control of after they usurped the original government of the uh, United States of America uh, in Congress Assembly. So basically they're talking about me and you. But the thing about it is this guy, Ernest Rothschild, or any of the so-called nobility, lack thereof, the so-called powers that be, people you like to use the term elite, all of these buzzwords that really don't define anybody. What I would say to that is nobody can actually free up your assets but you. Nobody can basically say what you are except you. If you do not declare what you are, then you are assumed to be something. 
So the only way to break the, the parallel, the paradox of the assumption is to declare exactly what it is. Once you say what it is, you're also saying what it isn't. So when you say that you're not a Negro black in color, then what you're doing is saying that you're not chattel property, you see? One, one goes hand in hand with the other. When you say that you're not, that you're a non-US citizen national or an American national, what you're saying is that you're not somebody's property. And that's not what they wanna hear in 2017. You gotta understand, they got a schedule that says by the end of 2018, most of what we call Europe is supposed to be dem decimated and basically in total war with Arabs, people they call Arabs. Now the term Arab was invented in 1914 so the people that they referring to as arabs is not even that everybody keeps telling me about africa africa but when i just did some research on that they said some of the fiercest racism that goes on in africa against so-called melanated people is happening in all the places coincidentally that the moors has set up shop in times of old such as more uh mauritania algiers tunis tripoli even segments of morocco they on it like that but that's just to say that when you look at what's happening, all of the countries that are on the that are on the fringe, meaning on the western portion, like the coastal part of the parts of Africa, are all the ones that are basically interdependent upon this pseudo uh, Arab Emirate Union thing. And so, for people who don't know, like slavery was abolished in Mauritania, like in 1986. They still enslaving Africans over. Are African countries unifying together, the so-called African Union, right? Are they unifying together to go in there and shut all of that down? No. One of the biggest insurance, okay, when you have ships, right, that are traveling with giant oil and stuff like that from one place to the other, some of those ships wind up being reported missing. But what happens is they don't be missing at all. What happens is the companies actually report them missing and then they take the ships and scuttle them into the giant um, ship graveyard they got in Mauritania. There's a whole big thing on that. You should look into that. But I say all of that to say that, so like I said, regardless, whenever you see all of these moors on TV and they be talking about all of this and you see all of this going forth, back and forth, who's the right one, who's the grand sheep, who's the this, this more went to jail for UCC, this more did all of this. Like what you gotta understand, man, real real people do real things. So anytime that you have moors or anybody, whether they be Asiatic period, and they are always on Facebook telling you everything they doing, but then at the same time, they act like what they're doing is helping other people. Then what is happening is they are doing things for likes. Like we're in a society where people just do things just to get other people to co-sign them doing it. And we're at a stage now, and we're at a stage now where that type of stuff is actually getting people locked up. That type of stuff is actually getting people's property seized and things like that. Because you can't be out here talking all of this stuff and you're not living it. You could be that if you are a quote unquote closet revolutionary. Like if you're in one of these movements, like one of the biggest movements they created through this whole propaganda, racial, fake race war thing, they wanna pop up with the Black Lives Matter thing, right? Now I'm not hating on anybody that wants to be a part of whatever they wanna be a part of, but you are dealing, anybody dealing with stuff like that, you need to find the operating uh, structure of how the movement was founded who founded it and the research that I did on it it seems like it is strictly a homosexual organization that is there to help promote black revolutionaries who also happen to be homosexuals to basically stop people from doing what because I, I ain't seen nothing from that movement manifest into any type of moratorium against killing black people I haven't seen and I haven't seen the killing stop at all. So what this says is that we're dealing with another form of controlled opposition, meaning that the oppressor is actually paying for the opposition that acts like it's there to bring it down, but really they're working hand in hand in tandem. And that has been the problem in this country since its founding, is that it was never founded really as a country on its own. It was founded always as a means to dis inherit the original people that were always here when people talk about capitalism 
capitalism is based on the industrial labor of the indigenous peoples wherever they were wherever they were or are on or in the earth and exploiting them and exploiting their resources to exacerbate this fictitious system that is based on corporate and hostile takeover so if you don't want to be a part of that you have to figure out how to do so and the only way that i've understood to do so is by actively declaring and bringing yourself out of it while at the same time creating an interface for you to be able to still subsist while you're bringing yourself out that's what an estate is for that's what a trust is for that's what a a a government is really supposed to be for not a religious organization not some sort of state sponsored uh non-profit situation i'm talking about something that is actively there to promote for you and your people only the only way that we can perceive and actively do that is for you to actually fire the custodians that have been utilizing and brutalizing you all these years and the only way you're going to be able to do that is to take full control of the corpus right which is the body but in order to do that you can't just take the body out of one system and be stateless you got to go back to what was already here for you and what was here for you is what has been here for all of us which is love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality, the original government, the original science of life, which is based upon the premise that we are more than what we have been assumed to be. And the only way we can go back to being that is by being yourself. So again, being yourself, you have to define what that is. You know what I'm saying? All I can do is hopefully provide aspects of you for you to see that it's not as difficult and hard as you make it. So if everybody in the world is pointing a finger at you, telling you that you as a melanated person, because you melanated for the simple fact of your skin being dark, you're the worst thing in the world, that means everybody telling you that believes the exact opposite of that. But if you fall into victim of that, if you fall into the, into the mind control aspect of that and start to believe the worst of yourself, then that's all you'll ever be. So I'm trying to think, is there anything else right now? I think that's it for right now. Uh, if you want to holler at me, holler at me at houseofellahotmail.com. Um, a lot of great things is happening for us uh, in terms of our uh, government, things like that, that we can build on with everybody. But again, that goes for a person-to-person basis. Um, everybody that's been calling, leaving numbers on the 800 number, like I said in the, in the YouTube text, uh, we're going to hit everybody back, but it's going to be at the top of the so-called fiscal new year, which is in January, because we get the Imperial Foreign Ministry together for people to be able to um, make appointments and actually start to move this thing in a more uh, uh, regimented way. Lastly, thank you guys. I reached a million uh, views and all of that. That's really dope, but we got to get the subscriptions up. Because what be happening to me is a lot of people will come. I get tourists. People will come and check for me, but they won't subscribe for me. So I get a million hits, but I only get like 13,000 subscribers, right? So what I'm trying to say is I need y'all help. I need y'all to help me up my subscription. Right? Because there's so many people I be seeing out here actively living and have way more subscriptions than me, but I'm peeping that they're actually looking at my stuff, right? And applying it to what they're doing, which is what everybody do now. We're not really in the age of originality. But at the same time, man, don't don't disrespect me. Don't try to make it seem like I'm out here, like, like I'm not here, while you're using elements of straight things that I've said. Literally verbatim, I've seen it come out of people's mouths on YouTube. But I'm not here to blow people up. I'm just here to say, yo, let's practice this equality and practice it with your boy. If you're inspired by the things that I do, thank you. I'm inspired by a lot of things that other people do. But the difference with me and them is that I am I will mention it. I will shout people out that I like and I have in the past. So all I'm saying is help me get these subscriptions up so that way I can, you know, get off this bike and and start to expand what I'm striving to do. So that way, when the time comes, we all can get there together on the same page instead of you having less and me having more, vice versa. All right? So in that, peace.